What's going on everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use the replay feature in Fortnite So I'm going to show you everything about the replay tool how to put it to use so that you can review your own gameplay See what you did wrong see enemies perspectives see teammates perspectives get a wide shot of the battle all this stuff Right, it's a kind of a complex tool and I'm going to show you how to use all the features So let's get right into it before we jump into it I just want to note that the replay system in Fortnite Fortnite is not pixel perfect. It is not accurate gameplay. What it's really doing is recreating or reproducing gameplay using a floating point system, meaning that my character right here is actually just this floating point in the air, an XYZ point, and it's reproducing or rendering a character in its place. Same with that gun right there. That's just a floating point. It renders a gun in that area. So what you'll see here is I'm missing bullets in the screen, right? It doesn't look like I'm really hitting them, but I actually am. If I were to record my own gameplay, my own screen at the time, I'm hitting those shots. It's going to show damage numbers. In this, it's just not going to show you accurate information all the time. So it's really better for like being able to review positioning of players, being able to review like rotations or maybe what you could have done differently in terms of movement it's not going to show you like oh did i miss this player by you know a millimeter or two it's just not going to give you that information the same way that a recording would so my recommendation is to always record your own gameplay if you're trying to get that information if you're trying to post to youtube if you're trying to share your videos with friends it's always better to just record your own first person perspective using your console software or using your pc software like obs okay with that being said let's show you how to turn on replays in your settings so first of all you're going to go into settings you're going to go over to the second tab here and then you're going to scroll down all the way to replays right here make sure you have record replays on you can turn off record large team replays unless you play a lot of ltm modes and stuff with large amount of players you can turn on or off creative replays i will say that if you play a lot of creative it's going to record those gameplays the stuff that's down at the bottom of the list is going to get erased so you might want to turn it off if you play a ton of creative and you don't care about seeing replays and then the last setting here is record high quality replays i always turn this off it says that it reduces performance and takes up extra hard drive space I've never really tested it. Maybe it's worth using. Maybe it'll make that gameplay a little more accurate. Maybe it'll add more floating point data. Maybe it's worth exploring. If you've played with it and it hasn't affected your performance, I'd love to hear about that. Please let me know all about it. Now let's show you how to access these replays. I'm picking up a controller here just to give you the controller perspective because most of my viewers are on a controller. Okay, so we're going to go over to the career tab here and then down below you can see this replays, right? I'm going to press Y on my controller to get there and now it's going to give me this list of replays. It's going to save probably the past like 50 games or so it saves a good amount of games right and it will start deleting anything at the bottom and it'll be replaced with new gameplay at the top so basically my most recent game right here was a creative match or i don't know what it was but i got six eliminations i don't think it was a real game and that is going to erase anything that's at the bottom so if you want to save your gameplay you need to click on something right you click on this or with the controller you press uh, y and you go rename and save you put in a name right there and then you hit confirm and then it will show up at the bottom as a blue eye icon right here. So these are examples right here, two examples of saved games, and then they won't be deleted over time. So if you want to save your gameplay, go ahead and save it that way. Oh, also I'll just note that on the right here, you'll see eliminations, and then you'll also see your finish or like where you placed in the game. So this is a first place. This is a first place. This is a sixth place. And these are the amount of eliminations. It also shows you the date and the length of the recording. Okay, so we'll jump into this one. So now we are in the replay, right? And I'm gonna just start off by showing you how to navigate this menu because it's a little complex, right? First of all, you've got this icon on the far left that is basically your timeline. You click on this little watch symbol here and you can scroll the timeline and pick different areas to go to, right? So let's just go to the middle of the game here or like the beginning of the game. And that is going to take us forward in the game, right? You can pause at any point by pressing Y, at least on a controller for me, it's Y. You can see the icon here. On PC, you just click this stuff, right? It's a, it's kind of easier on PC, I think, for me personally, but uh, for controller players, maybe you're used to it. The next thing that you can do is you can skip to events. So if you use this button right here, these ones, these like big forward buttons. Uh, if you press the skip button, it's actually gonna fast forward to the next event. And events are knocks, basically. Eliminations, knocks, or going down yourself. These reticle icons are actually eliminations. These exclamation points are knocks, meaning that you knock someone down to the ground. And then like the reticle is a thirst. Alternatively, if you get knocked, it shows up as an X, right? If you get killed, it shows up as an X. I don't know if it's a knock or a kill, but it shows up as an X if you get on the ground. Okay, so those are the explanation of those icons. 
icons. Now we go back to play, right? And now we're back on the controller. And now if you use these little like curved arrows, right? These are gonna take you back 15 seconds or they're gonna take you forward 15 seconds. This is just 15 seconds. And then these ones are to the next event, right? So if I skip to this, it takes me to the next event. And it usually starts about five seconds before that event happens. So we're gonna knock this guy and this is the event that it skipped to basically. And then the next thing that you can do is you can change to different players, right? So over here on the far right, there's gonna be different players. I think my mouse is moving. There's different players that you can skip to different uh, perspectives. So it's gonna grab anyone within a certain zone of the owner of the video. Now I'm the owner of the video, Toby Wan Shinobi YT right here is the owner of this video. And one really annoying thing is that it's only going to be able to show you players within a certain vicinity of Toby Wan Shinobi, the owner of the video. So you cannot see someone's gameplay if they're too far out away from you. So you can't really find everyone in the lobby. You will be able to actually press this little start button opposite of your start button. It's like a picture in picture on Xbox. You can see all these people that are alive in the game, right? You can scroll through this whole list see everyone that's playing, but you cannot skip to their gameplay because they're not actually within the circle of where you're at. So like this guy over here, this nightmares, I can't see uh, Rob. I can see because he's close enough. But apart from that, you really can't like skip around to anyone you want. You only can see people within a certain distance of Toby Wan Shinobi because he's the owner of the video. So really we get very limited amount of people that we can see at any given time. And then if you're following someone's gameplay like this guy and he leaves the circumference or the radius of Toby Wan Shinobi's little circle there, then you're not gonna be able to see his gameplay anymore. And then it's just instantly gonna revert back to Toby Wan Shinobi. So that's just a note there on how it works. It's a little bit of annoying. Also, Additionally, you cannot see people's loadouts as far as I know. I don't know any way to see people's loadouts. Maybe you guys know, but I can't really tell if there's any way to see people's loadouts, which is kind of bothersome as well. Maybe it saves data that way. All right, so that's kind of the, the main navigation, right? Of how to like navigate through a video. Now you've got this option right here, this camera option, which is gonna open up more advanced details of stuff that we're really not gonna get into in this video. This is more for like tournament playback stuff, like seeing a bunch of teams, being able to see nameplates, you can turn this on, right? And that's gonna start showing people's names if I back out now and I go to like this mode. Oh my gosh, sometimes. So this is that floating point information stuff, right? Like right now it hasn't rendered the gun in my hands. So, you know, it's a little weird. And then also sometimes it just like, it doesn't show you what you're supposed to see. Now it takes a little bit of time to render in Yuki Bear's name right there. So now this is what I'm talking about, seeing those player name cards. That's just an example of kind of those advanced options. And there's all kinds of things you can change in here. Again, it's a little too much that I don't think anyone's really that interested in this stuff for this video. If you wanna play with it, you can, but basically it just changes how far you see players, how far you see storm details, all this kind of stuff, right? This is a lot of the player outline stuff and effects. A lot of the stuff actually is good for photography, which it would be the next thing. So so here's the photo settings and typically there's like a f-stop and a focal length so I'm not really sure why some of those settings are missing but typically it's more advanced but I'm actually gonna get into how to take nice photos in Fortnite in my next video that's going to be next video after this I'm gonna show you how to take really nice photos in Fortnite using the uh, camera features and then this right here is just time of day it allows you to change to like night or day and again this is probably mostly for photos as well to get nice reflections and all that and I will say that I am playing in low performance mode right now so this game looks like junk if you're taking photos definitely turn it into to like DX12. If you can do that on a console, it's probably always gonna look good, but I always uh, change to DX12 if I'm taking photos. So that's more of the advanced settings in there. We're really not gonna get into it in this video. We are gonna get into the photography stuff next video. Now let's talk about how to kind of move around and look at different players and look at the environment, right? We just kind of covered navigational stuff. Now let's cover movement. So let's say that I'm on Yuki Bear over here. I'm on a drone follow, which is basically going to change the perspective to be following her at like a certain certain height it kind of maintains a certain height and it kind of just changes the angle on her now this is what i'm talking about with this playback it's super choppy you know you get this kind of stuff a lot right especially when you're switching between players it kind of like has to catch up i think but yeah we've changed these modes by pressing in on the right toggle on a controller that is going to be drone attach and usually i will use drone attach if i'm trying to like back out and look at players i like to do drone attach because it kind of like gives you an idea of where this person is because like it shows their movement uh, and you can find them easier. If you do drone free, you're absolutely gonna be just like 
free in the world and a lot of times you won't be able to find yourself but that's just kind of a preference thing right like if you want to just explore the world go for it you can speed up by pressing b or x it's actually not showing it right now let me try to see if i can there it goes so b or x see down there on the bottom right above the health if you switch over it shows you x and b is how you speed up the camera movement so if i'm drone free i can actually fly around the map really quick uh, by just mashing the B button and now I'm at like four times speed or whatever. Now you can press left and right on the triggers to go up and down with the drone. And also when you're following people, you can go up and down as well. In certain modes at least, I think in drone follow, uh, you can go up and down, uh, yeah. And then you can also change the camera stuff. Oh my gosh, this is giving me a headache <laughs> just watching this. Uh, you can also change you know, your look just by using the look toggle and then you can strafe uh, left and right and forward and back with your movement toggle now you can change the speed of the gameplay so let's go into gameplay here go back to me toby Wan shinobi it looks like these guys are pushing us okay interesting so now we're in toby Wan shinobi's gameplay and now we want to speed or we slow it down right so now if i press down on the d-pad it's going to go into a slow motion mode alternatively if i press up i can 4x this right if i just get through a part of the clip really fa fast and uh, interesting, we just passed over that team and didn't even realize it. Oh, we're coming back for him, nice. Okay, so now say I wanna pause this video right here, right? And I wanna get like an idea of kinda how this whole fight played out, right? So we've kinda covered most of the navigation stuff and the movement stuff. If I wanna back out and go into a drone attach or a drone free, if I do drone free, see how like confusing this can be? I don't even know where it just put me. Oh my gosh. So I'm like actually off the island. So that's what I'm saying. This like replay mode is far from perfect. There are a lot of issues like this, a lot of bugs that'll like make you have to restart the replay if you want the whole system to act proper. Anyways, I guess we can't do drone free unless we spend an hour trying to find ourselves here. So what I'm going to do is switch my perspective by pressing in on the toggle and going to a uh, drone attach because this is often how I watch videos. We'll rewind by 15 seconds using that little rewind thing. Okay, now let's watch this fight play out i'm gonna get a little angle here and kind of see what's going on here now it is following me to kind of see what i was doing i can also pause and i can just rotate around and see what was happening here as well as speed up the uh, drone by pressing b to speed it up or x to slow it down so i'm pressing b now i'm backing up i'm seeing my teammates are down here you know, I can kind of get this whole perspective that I you wouldn't get from just raw gameplay, right? So this is kind of the power of it, right? Is like seeing these different things that I could have done in the fight. Although this was a pretty successful fight, you know, there's always other options of how to handle these fights. And that's kind of one of the cool things about this mode is that we can back up 15 seconds. Okay, so we pull up in this car here, right? And I can look at like the, the options that I would have had, right? I could have like, I can pause this and I can think about what I could have done. If I have some uh, grapple glove on me, I could have probably gone up here and got behind this rock for more of a flank or I could have even swung up even higher although that would be dangerous because I'd probably get shot out so honestly using this hard cover right here was a great move I'm actually pretty happy with what we did here because this is good hard cover they have no hard cover right here so this is a good move by us at least by me pulling this car up right here and using this hard cover but you know it gives you an idea of how you can navigate and look at these different options of how you could have taken a fight differently especially if you lose a fight right it's really great to review it and be like oh you know, I should have gone up here. Why wouldn't this enemy right here, right? If they have any sort of movement or anything like that, they should have started this fight by getting out of here. This is a death trap, right? We've got hard cover behind this area right here, and they've got only that rock, which got deleted, but they should have just rotated up this hill, got high ground, and taken the fight up here, and they probably would have won it. But they didn't, and so this is kind of like, you know, a learning moment for them if they're in the camera or if they're in the replay. They can take this information and be like, oh, well, we should have instantly swung over here or, you know, whatever. So that kind of gives you an idea of how to use these replays to break down footage and give an idea of how things played out. Additionally, I can slow down the tape by pressing up and down on the D-pad, and, you know, now we're seeing things in a slower mode. And then we go ahead and hit Y to play. And now we can see like kind of a slow motion. Now, remember, this is not accurate. Like, look at what's happening here. This is weird looking. 
uh, but it gives you an idea of kind of how this fight played out. And the last thing I'll mention is you can change the focal length here so that you have like a more zoomed in thing by pressing these bumpers. You can press these bumpers right here. That'll change the focal length, which allows you to get like a, a fisheye or uh, like, you know, this would be like kind of a normal looking gameplay. But if I pull back right here by pressing this bumper, I can get more of a fisheye view and get more of the battle. If I just hold down on my bumper, I can zoom in really tight. And this is usually used for photography because you can change like the focal length so you can blur the background and all this stuff. But yeah, that's kind of how you uh, basically zoom in and out really quick other than just moving towards a player or away from a player. And the last thing I can mention is that you can press in on the left toggle and that will change the HUD. So basically no information on the HUD. If you press in a few times, it's just gonna be a nice clean look, great for photos. If you press in once, it's just gonna give you the information of the player that you're looking at, as well as like some gameplay information on the edges. And then if you press in again, it's gonna bring back this whole menu here. If you ever lose this menu, if you ever go HUDless, right? And you forgot the button to press, you can always press the start button and then back out again, and it will bring you back to this whole timeline controller here. All right, so that's basically the replay mode in a nutshell. I hope it was helpful. You can definitely go more in depth and do like the tournament stuff where you're looking at other players, get a little more advanced, but for the purpose of this video, I think this is gonna be mostly what people wanted to know. Now, if you wanna take your Fortnite Zero Build gameplay to the next level, check out my must watch playlist on my channel. I think it's really gonna help you out. And once you watch a couple videos there, I'm sure you're gonna wanna subscribe. So smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be alerted every time a new video drops. And then, if you want to take your gameplay even further, check out a Shinobi Clan membership. You can click the join button on the video or on my page, and you will see options for joining at different levels. The master level is probably the most value. It's going to give you three days of hands-on training per week with other Shinobi masters, as well as myself. So consider that. And then if you really want to go deep and you want to improve your skills as quickly as possible, consider a two-hour one-on-one coaching session with myself you can book that at tobywanshinobi.com. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Have yourselves a great day. Shinobi out.